2021 ushered in a new era of figures for the Masters of the Universe brand, that being the Masterverse toy line. And in my opinion, it is one of my favorite toy lines running uh, actively right now. Uh, with 2021, Masterverse was very heavily focused on Masters of the Universe revelations and the designs from that show, and those figures are all great, good fun and everything, but 2022 has brought us some new, new and old figures, essentially, and I am super excited to be diving into these figures with you guys. It is, of course, none other than New Eternia He-Man and New Eternia Skeletor. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and dive in. Before we dive into these figures, thank you all for joining me. Uh, don't forget to hit the like button, go ahead and subscribe uh, right here on YouTube as well. And if you like what you see here on YouTube, uh, but you wanna see it shorter, I do make TikToks over on my TikTok, and I do just photo posts usually over on my Instagram as well, so go ahead and follow those. All right, let's get to the figures. All right, hello everybody, my name is Deceptibot9. Welcome or welcome back to my channel, depending on where we stand. It's been a hot minute since I've been here, but we're back, we're kicking. I am super excited to be talking about these guys. Like I said in the intro, I was able to pick these up at the Mattel Toy Store in El Segundo, California. If you don't know what New Eternia is, New Eternia is going to be a subline of figures in the Masterverse toy line where all the characters are sort of designed based upon original concept designs and drawings. And right now, with the release of these figures, it's pretty meaningful uh, for the Masters of the Universe community because uh, back in December or January, uh, we lost Mark Taylor, who is an artist who was basically responsible for the creation of the Masters of the Universe toy line. He did all the original concept designs and art for all of the characters. And so a really influential piece uh, of history to the Motu brand. Uh, and so it feels kind of fitting that these new Eternia figures have come out uh, around this time. And these things, man, are incredible. So without further ado, we're gonna go ahead, take a closer look at these guys, show you what they're all about. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at He-Man first. And we'll give a nice little 360 here so we can kind of show off his entire full view. And you'll notice that there is a lot of parts that look very similar to the other uh, Masterverse He-Man, the one from Revelations, because the designs honestly aren't too drastically different in terms of a general aesthetic. Obviously, he still retains the harness and a belt with a loincloth and some boots with some fuzzy on top, uh, the shield brace here and the other brace on the side. And we even see some very similar weapons, including the axe and the power sword on the back. Uh, in terms of things that are different, obviously the design here on the harness is slightly different. We've got these uh, new shoulder armor pads here, this sweet Viking helmet. Uh, he also has a sweet little knife here that fits into a pouch on his le right leg and it just has its own little sheath slides right in fits very very nicely he can also obviously hold the power sword as we see it is held in by a harness although in the uh, new eternia world not quite sure if it would still be called the power sword or not or if it would still just be called or if it would just be a regular sword who knows anyway there he is decked out with his weapons. And in terms of other accessories that you get with He-Man, we get a fully fisted hand right here. We get an open hand right here. And we get this alternate head, which is a kind of vintage figure inspired uh, head. Looks very reminiscent of that original figure. And let me go ahead and show you what that looks like on his head. All right, there he is, Viking He-Man with the Viking helmet removed. Uh, it's, a, it's a really nice looking head sculpt overall. Uh, a lot of people were worried initially with the product photos that it was going to look a little off and look a little weird, but in hand, in person, it looks really spectacular, really fantastic. Um, I honestly prefer uh, the Viking helmet head because it is something that is uh, a little different and a little more unique and makes this He-Man stand out uh, amongst some of the other He-Mans. So I'm going to go ahead and swap that real quick. 
All right, we're going to go ahead and cover the articulation real quick, and then we'll hit some comparisons. So uh, it is very typical of all the other Masterverse articulation. It's got the sort of double ball jointed head, so, you know, it can swivel around. The hair on this one uh, can occasionally limit where it goes, but it's honestly really not too bad. He can look down all the way. He can look up just a little bit all the way to the sides because he can go all the way around. Ooh, there we go. But that, uh, yeah, that double joint is is quite handy. Uh, the arms, they swivel all the way around. You can get them to go all the way around, but the shoulder pads uh, will kind of hinder that a little bit. They go out all the way, swivel at the bicep. They have the typical double elbow, uh, which doesn't have, it'll do the other arm so it's not uh, blocked by that guard. It's a pretty solid bend uh, overall, uh, maybe not as deep as it could be if he weren't so damn buff, but you know what it is. He swivels here at the wrist with a hinge as well that is on both. He has this ab cut that can help uh, with articulation upper mid uh, ab section, and he has a waist swivel as well to further that. Down here to the legs is probably where most of the articulation is hindered by uh, the skirt piece, obviously, but it can go forward and can go kind of backwards that far, can go out that far. Um, you can go that far with a full spread. The double knee as well, which is a incredible bend right there. We get the swivel at the boot and the ankle pivot as well as uh, ankle swivel. So a, a pretty solid amount of range of articulation for uh, this He-Man. It is the same with all the other Masterverse figures as well, but they're pretty solid in terms of their articulation. So let's look at comparisons. Quick comparison with his wave mate. That is the Skeletor that goes with him there. There he is with the Revelations He-Man. So you can really see uh, the differences uh, in terms of how they look here. And I don't know if you can tell, but the actual skin tone um, of these two are ever so slightly different. Uh, this one seems like it's a little more cartoony. I, I mean, I guess that makes sense. Whereas this one seems like it's a little more defined because uh, I thought it would be really cool to be able to put the vintage-inspired alternate head that you get with New Eternia He-Man onto Revelations He-Man, but the, skin's the skin tones don't really match, so you can't quite uh, get it. But uh, one thing that I think is cool to note is they could have just reused the same power sword, but if you look at them, they are two different power swords in terms of uh, sculpting. Like You can see it especially with the little uh, flares on the side and the diamond. Uh, and even the handles are different, uh, all the way down to the pommel. So that is a detail that I wasn't really expecting. Um, I kind of figured they would just reuse the same power sword assets, but they didn't. So it, it, it really makes for two quite unique looking He-Men. All right, and if you wanted to know what new Eternia He-Man looks like on Revelations Battle Cat, because of course you got to have a Battle Cat to go with your He-Man, uh, that's what he looks like. And that's a pretty awesome looking combo. I hope we can get a, another Battle Cat soon to maybe match this new Eternia aesthetic, because I think that would be quite neat. Don't go away. We'll be back right after these messages. And now back to He-Man. All right, with He-Man out of the way, it's time to look at Skeletor, one of my favorite villain characters of all time. He's like right up there behind Darth Vader in terms of how much I love a certain villain. And this version of Skeletor does not disappoint. Again, uh, like He-Man, there are things that are very notable about this Skeletor design that look familiar, um, but I think there is a little more different going on with this Skeletor. Obviously, we can see this main thing is he's got this over harness uh, over the top of his uh, chest plating that exists already, and it kind of evokes a Horde-esque design, I think, but that was before the Horde was designed, so who really knows? We get down here, we get this, this belt and the, the armor-ish looking tunic. We get down here, the shins are different. He's got uh, more toes, which we'll see when we look at the Revelation one. He has a uh, larger amount of toes. And 
One of my favorite things about this design is this head sculpt. If we get in close here to this head sculpt, you'll notice he's got this, he's got this weird little ghost, oh, focus, there we go. This weird little ghostly beard on him that I just think is such a neat touch to the Skeletor design. Uh, and it's really, really cool. Plus this helmet looks great. Those uh, red eyes are just piercing through the yellow skull. It is absolutely fantastic right there. Uh, you'll notice the other new addition here is this little guy. Uh, the back of the packaging refers to this as the yeah, Scimitar of Chaos, which is kind of a uh, artifact that this version of Skeletor is going after uh, rather than the Power Sword, which is uh, a neat addition that I really, really enjoy. It's adding some lore to these figures that are probably only going to be toy line exclusive figures unless they have a, show, a new Eternia show or anything planned, but I don't think they do. So that's a really neat touch. I love getting some additional lore in terms of what these guys are up to. Now in terms of accessories for Skeletor, we get roughly the same amount as we get for He-Man. There is, again, here is that fisted hand, and here is the other grippy hand, because you'll notice I have the open hand here on Skeletor, and just like Viking He-Man, there is a vintage-inspired head sculpt going on here as well, so let's take a look at that on the body. And there he is with that more vintage inspired head and that looks incredible. And if you really wanna to top the look off, you do, or you should rather, remove the harness with the cape. And so even though this Skeletor uh, is going capeless, sorry, what is his, his foot is being all kinds of wonky. Anyway, uh, he is going capeless, but that is a, a pretty vintage and awesome looking uh, version of Skeletor. So let's get in close on this head sculpt and this harness piece. This head sculpt is tremendous. Again, just like the other one, the way the red eyes are piercing through the yellow with the little greenish hints up there. We're getting a dark, dark purple with the hood and a dark purple here with the upper armor. A little light purple there for the dot in the middle. And uh, just like He-Man, I was excited to try to put this head on the Revelation Skeletor, but as we'll see in a second, doesn't quite match. Let's tackle articulation real quick, even though it is exactly the same as He-Man, so we get the double uh, ball joint in the head so he can look down that far, up that far. He's got the torso cut right there, move that around, the swivel here, uh, arms swivel all the way around, up, down, swivel at the bicep, the double elbow still exists, all the wrist stuff. Uh, legs, you get a little more leeway with Skeletor's skirt uh, going forward. Uh, not much more going back, same here, double knees, just like He-Man. They are a, a little tight there. The swivel on the cut on the boot and the ankle articulation remains the same as well. So he does have a spot on his back to hold the scimitar of chaos. He of course does come with a havoc staff, but uh, and it is different design from the power sword. Uh, so we'll see it here in a second, but I really love the design going on with the Havoc staff here. Uh, but it does retain the same problem as the Revelations one in which the head makes it quite heavy. And so in certain positions, it will make the wrist be uh, kind of limp, but overall does not look too bad. While we're on the note of uh, holding accessories weird, uh, something I noticed is that if you just put the Scimitar of Chaos in this hand with the little trigger finger, uh, it doesn't really like to stay unless it's kind of at an angle. Uh, so I noticed with the way the, the part above the handle, <laughs> with the way that is sculpted is you can actually put it below the trigger finger. Uh, that is not usually safe swords play, but you gotta do what you gotta do in order to wield the Scimitar of Chaos. Am I right or am I right? Okay, we're gonna pop this head off. Go back to the full new Eternia aesthetic and let's see what he looks like with Revelations Skeletor. Now, uh, they do look, they, they look really, oh, focus on them please. There we go. So they do look really nice together. Obviously the design for Skeletor in Revelations is uh, already pretty 
classically vintage Skeletor. Uh, obviously, there is some differences here in the head. We get some hollow eyes um, and a little bit of a more pale or a realistic skull face rather than the classic red eyes with the piercing yellow look. Uh, colors are different. And again, that's where I, I was saying I would have loved to be able to put this vintage head on the Revelations body, but you can really see uh, the color mismatch between them. Um, but just like the Origins figures, all of these pieces, or you know, mostly like these harness pieces on top are removable, so you could do a little bit of swapping around to be able to make that work. Let's show off the differences here in the Havoc staff. So you can really see this one is a more vintage uh, toy and cartoon inspired Havoc staff. Uh, the, the goat skull is a little bigger. It's not painted, it uh, is all one color, uh, whereas this one has some different varying colors throughout, but it's got that more little UFO-y designs there. So there are the two Skeletors. All right, here is a big group shot of the He-Mans and the Skeletors together. All right, that's gonna be it for these two, uh, new Eternia He-Man and Skeletor. These two are great figures and easily already some of my favorites from the Masterverse line. If you are uh, doing the Masterverse line, you're going to want to get these guys because they are some of the best additions to the line. Uh, if you've been hesitant about jumping into Masterverse at this point, but you're a fan of some of the vintage designs and some of the original concept designs, you're going to want to pick these figures up too because they do a tremendous job at honoring the original while also making them uh, modern and just overall solid designs. Um, I'm really hoping we get some more new Eternia stuff coming out soon so we can have some more to go with these guys. Uh, I would hate for them to just be a couple of one-offs because I think they are fantastic. All right, guys, that is going to be it today overall. If you have these figures already, uh, go ahead and let me know what you think about them down below. So, thank you all for joining me if you watched all the way to the end. I really, really appreciate it. And I'll catch y'all next time.